Today's show is all about a new colorway using the Go Grandmother's Fan Dye. Welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks for joining us today. Emily's in the house. How are you, my friend? I am great. It was a restful holiday weekend. Yes. Looking forward to the new year coming up. I can't believe it. it's already almost 2023. So busy. So busy. So busy this time of year, but really nice. Nice to have the holiday weekend. Exactly. Um, we have some folks that are watching today. Um, we have Gail watching from Maine, and Karen is watching from Oregon. And Anne is watching from Joshua, Texas. And the sun is shining there. This Is the sun shining here? Kind of. Yeah, it's pretty kind nice of. outside. Um, for... Last <laughs> week, it was like 38 below on a Wednesday. So today, it's just lovely outside. <laughs> All right, let's showcase the new projects from our intro video. First up is Donette H. Okay, Donette, we think that the center must have been a panel. Yeah. And then you've added some really cool big blocks probably using your cubes yes. to the outside to create that beautiful, beautiful quilt. It's gorgeous. Yeah, that's It's so pretty. And unique with all those different blocks that she, she did such a good job of, of choosing which, you know, which blocks to, to do around that right. border. Just gorgeous. Right. And the colorway is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Good job. And next we have Penny W. And we love <laughs> this gnome because this gnome is truly 3D. He is. He's little got mug his, rug. his little fuzzy beer. Oh my gosh, that's just adorable. Super cute. Love Super it. Super cute. All right, we are talking about Valentine's Day uh, quilts. So here is my photo of the day. This is almond roca. Um, I grew up in Seattle, and this is a really an almond roca is like a big popular candy in Seattle. It is my all-time favorite, hands down candy for Valentine's Day. Now, all of the boys in the Dream Studio today said their favorite candy are Reese's uh, peanut butter cups that are shaped like hearts. They also like the ones that are shaped like uh, pumpkins and trees depending on the holiday there. <laughs> what about you, Emily? What do you love? You know, I always, I have like a little tradition where I literally will go and like get the Russell Stover's variety because oh, I love yes. truffles, like chocolate and truffles. Just like, there's nothing better on Valentine's Day. And do you like the ones with the creamy centers or the nut centers? I'm a, I'm a the creamy center kind of gal. Are you? Yes. Oh, listen, we should always share a box of chocolates. So good. We I only like the nuts. Kind perfect. Of. We could split. Love that. That'd love it. great. <laughs> All right, in the comments, section today what is your favorite valentine's day candy i can hardly wait yes. to see the answers hey quilters check out the AccuQuilt website for some great deals and discounts today i'm going to give away one of our go grandmother's fan dies be sure to register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page for your chance to win by registering you receive an event email and that way you'll never miss an exciting tutorial the amazing emily will announce the winner of our registered viewer at the end of our show all right now that the holidays are over and you have a minute to spare we want you to think ahead to valentine's day which will be here in just not very long yeah, in the blink of an eye yes <laughs> so the go gingham heart throw quilt by amanda harwood of larkspur quilts is truly truly one of my favorite patterns and i'm going to come back and talk about it it's here hanging on the back wall i love this because you only need eight of the grandmother fans blocks to make the beautiful heart. Look at how fun that is. It's lovely. All right. And then Emily, what are these? Do you know? Do you Those know what are the, the, the nine and a half inch, nine inch finished squares, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. And they're nice and big, so you could just, you could get that project done so quickly. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I love the fact that it you're just making these Grand, they're fan blocks, yeah. and then you're just adding squares. Exactly. So today for your projects, uh, supplies you're going to need, uh, the Go Big, if you have the Go Big fabric cutter, you can get the nine and a half inch, nine inch finished square. The Go Grandmother's Fan Dye, it will fit through the Go or the Go Big. A 10 by 24 cutting mat, a 14 by 16 cutting mat, and red and pink scraps or fat quarters, whatever you want to use, okay? 
Now this pattern may look complicated because of all the curved pieces, but AccuQuilt adds notches to all of their curved shapes and putting them together is a stamp. So I'm gonna move some of my stuff and we're gonna talk about the die. Um, Emily, this is actually over the holidays. Um, I made a really fun project using this die for um, for our Katie, who lives in our, who's part of our family. Yeah. Um, I used some green grunge. I was gonna say, was I like the green and gold with kind yes, of a polka dot serpentine I block? Love that project. Yeah, Gorgeous. I just like this die because it's a traditional block, a traditional pattern, mm -hmm. but you can totally change the colorway. Absolutely. So here's shape B. Oh, here, let me show you a block. I have some made, imagine that. And how cute are those? These are super <laughs> cute. Okay, so these, the fans that you need, um, these are shape B, okay? And look, I truly just went to my scrap bag and got all of my scraps. Perfect. And then this is the outer arch, and we're gonna talk about it because um, you need to read the pattern to determine um, which color of arch you need. Sure. And then A is the center here, okay? So when I was cutting my pieces, uh, I used scraps for this and then I used scraps for the center for shape A. That's perfect. And I love the way that the Bs are laid out because they're, they're right next to each other. You're not gonna waste an inch of fabric. No. So yep. nice. Yeah, and they all have notches because right here, these curves, that's, um, we're gonna add those curves. All right, to the end. All right, so since our hearts are scrappy, um, I have a whole bunch that are already cut, and before I start laying out our fabric, Emily, tell us what are people's favorite candy, because really that's what we're wanting to know. I know, right? And it's so funny, we've already got a viewer, uh, Miss Pat, who's, who's dying for a hint on the new dye. But I think, Pat, you're gonna have to stay tuned. We're, we're gonna oh, be launching that in just a few days Tuesday. now. Tuesday. So exciting. Okay, listen. I can tell you this, because I know what it is. Um, this is a huge, highly requested die, and it is super, super cute. You're gonna love it. Oh boy. That's what I'm telling you. Oh boy. Okay, tell us what people are eating <laughs> for candies. Yes, back to candy. So um, Pam C is, a, oh, dark chocolate dove bars, like the mm. little the little minis. Oh, those little bites. Oh, those are perfect. Okay, I'm just, down with that. Oh, yep, oh, Gail. Reese's Hearts, all the way. She can hang with the boys. She can hang with the boys. And then um, Miss Alicia says, mint meltaways. I haven't had one of those in a long time. I don't know what time. a mint meltaway is. Like those little bitty, like kind of chocolate with the mint on the inside. And they're like, I think they're creamy on the inside. They're oh, so good. Oh, like an good. Andy's mint? Yeah. Okay. I think that that's what I'm, what I'm, okay. what she's referring to. But yes. Um, and then Judy says, anything chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alyssa, who um, is on our team, our live stream team, she um, has an allergy to chocolate, so she loves Swedish fish. Yes. Oh, those fish. are so good. <laughs> okay. Let us carry on. All right. So here's our block, and we want all of our fan shapes to be different. And I cut a whole bunch already, but we're gonna cut some more. I'm gonna show you how to lay them out because I really truly did want them all scrappy. Mm -hmm. You know, you can mix and match them and put them together. And I, I went to my bag of pink fabrics and scraps yeah. and just found some really fun ones that I thought, oh, these will work together, okay? All right, so let me show you how you're gonna cut scraps because Obviously, I have some that are already cut. Look at this one. What a pile. I love this fabric. <laughs> and the gingham. Gingham is always good, okay? So what I've done is I have all of my, here we go. All right, so shape B, I'm gonna do just one section of the fan here. And this one will actually fit over two because the blades are here, okay? And then this um, scrap is actually gonna fit over all three shapes. Oh, look how perfect that is. Yeah, I did a little sub cutting sure. because you know, my scraps are just truly scraps. <laughs> so I did measure and did a little sub cutting. And then when I'm done with this, then I'm gonna have some more pink scraps, which is kind of fun, okay? Now, for the block, 
Um, four of the sections of the heart need all of the shapes, bees, and then a middle, and then it needs an outer border of pink, mm -hmm. okay? You can see the ones I did here. This one is the chocolate one, oh, right? So this is like the light chocolate one, okay? All right, so you need to follow the pattern, okay? But for this one, I am actually did a little subcutting, and I'm gonna cut not only the little arch for the outside, but the A shape as well, because then I can kind of mix and match them. Yeah, there you go. Okay, oh, this is so cute. This, I love fabric with words on it. So this says, dream big, embrace kindness, practice compassion. I just think it's fun. Aw. Okay. All right, so I, I measured so that I made sure that I cut all of my arch and then the middle, okay? Awesome. You wanna use a 10 by 24 cutting mat so you get all of the pieces. And I'm gonna use my Go Big today, but you could use this in your Go Fabric Cutter as well. Sure could. All right, so Emily, while it's cutting, tell us what are people's favorite candy? <laughs> well, it's fun. It, we, um, Miss Erica explained that mint meltaways are the mint, they're like the baker's chocolates. That, oh, yeah. okay. So here in Nebraska, we have a brand of chocolate called Baker's Chocolate. Yes. And actually, Deanna says that the mint meltaways are made in Greenwood, Nebraska. How oh, there funny you go. is that? There you go. What a small world. Founders of Baker's Chocolate live across the street from me. Nuh uh. They do. Oh my God. And when my kids were little and would go over and um, uh, shovel their drive, mm -hmm. they would come home with huge big bags of Baker's Chocolate. Well, it was great. Worse. Okay, yeah. we're going to give it a little love. We're going to slide our mat. Don't lift. Okay, and now, see, I have more scraps for my scrap bin, which I'm excited about, but look at this. Look how perfect it cut that arch. And I made sure that the words were going the right direction. Perfect. Okay. Oh my gosh. How and then look, here's our shape bees. I love the peeling. That's, I think that's my favorite part about cutting with the dies is, is the reveal. Peel away. The, yeah, the, the big away. reveal. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay, so notice right here I have one little thread. Mm. Sometimes I just get that one little thread. I'm never going to pull it. I'm just going to take my little Karen K. Buckley scissors and trim it away. Exactly. Those scissors are a godsend. I love them. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I just need two more blocks. I actually have six already sewn. I had some time off. It was fun. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out my blocks and you need six little fans, um, sections of the fan to make a block, okay? All right, so there we go, and there's this. Oh, we have some fun questions coming in, Pam. All right, ask us some questions because we, we know things. We know the things about the stuffs. We do. <laughs> Miss Margie is wondering, she's wanting to make some rag quilts from jeans and is wondering which dyes are good to purchase. Uh, so we have a rag die mm -hmm. that cuts um, shapes for your rag quilts. So that would be a really good one. If you're going to cut denim, I'm going to tell you to cut one layer at a time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we have the, the eight and a half inch rag square, and then we also have a five and a quarter inch. Um, and I believe there's also a circle, if I'm remembering that correctly. Is there a circle? <laughs> like, is there, I'm just on the website. I think I, I think there is a circle. I think a circle. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, lay out my blocks and I'm going to do the other one on top. Um, we, had a, we had a funny thing because behind Emily today, there is an amazing quilt by our good friend Gina Jempasa. Mm. And do you know the name of this quilt, Emily? Because everybody's going to want to know the <laughs> minute do. we show it off. Yeah, it's the Go Grandmother's Garden Wall Hanging Pattern. Right. And there's right there. Good job, Justin, right there. <gasps> Emily, tell us what dye she used to make that. Um, it was the Drunkard's Path. Yes. But I was sitting there going, it's the bottom of the fan. Yes. I know it is. And I was like, no, no, it's not. It's not. I was swearing but on my life. <laughs> this is this is really a cool pattern because you take and kind of deconstruct the grandmother's fan. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't put the, all the sections together, which I think is super cool. Just amazing. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so now I have my little fans laid out. I made sure they weren't the same fabrics. Because, you know, we don't want to duplicate that. Okay, <laughs> and do we have other questions before I start sewing? Let's see, I believe we do. Actually, they're wondering, um, Elisa is wondering what the difference is between the Dresden plate and the grandmother's fan. Great question. Mm -hmm. um, so Dresden plate, you sew the pieces together and then it's appliqued onto a square. Grandmother's fan is you piece all of the pieces together and it makes a square. Oh. So Dresden plate is applique, you have to piece it and then applique, sure. whereas grandmother's fan is just pieced. This makes a, how big of a block do you know? It is a, oh gosh, um, nine, nine inches? inch finished box. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start here in the end and I'm just gonna sew my pieces together. Okay, oh dang, hey, um, can we plug this in? Oh yeah, it's okay. We got this, we got this. Let's let's look at some more questions while we're, yeah, while we're plugging stuff up. in. Miss Ann is wondering, oh, this is a great troubleshooting question. What does it mean when you turn on the go big and the lights are both green and blue? Oh, Emily, do you know the answer to that? That means that there is something in the cutting area that it either needs to be like, it, it could be the dye itself or, you know, a little bit of dust or something like yeah. that. Um, but yes, that just, um, I believe a, a, just a little reset or turning it on and off right. again. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it off, turn it off, and then you can put your hand in here and see, you know, maybe is there something, you know, is there a piece of fabric in there or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, if the blue light is ever on, that means caution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, put your, don't ever put your hands in there until you've turned it off. Exactly. All right, so I'm gonna start sewing my fans together. Oh. All right, Emily, tell us what people are eating. Yes, all for of Valentine's Day. <laughs> now that we've all just had, there are still in this dream studio, Christmas cookies. Oh my gosh. I know, I but we're to... talking about Valentine's Day, so it's okay. We sure are, I know, we're all over the place and I love it. Um, Jenny says that her favorite is chocolate turtles for Valentine's Day. Oh, I Day. do love turtles. Same, oh my gosh. Oh, well, pecans and caramel, yes. you could never go wrong. Ooh, Donna likes cream-filled milk chocolates. Cream-filled milk chocolate. Oh, okay. That would be kind of a Russell Stover yes. thing too, like the, oh, so yummy. Okay. Um, let's see, we have Junior Mints. Okay, Junior Mints to me are like, go to the movies candy. I know, right? They really are. They really, really one day, are. One day we'll have that be the question is, what candy do you take to the movies? Okay, look how I'm yeah. just chain piecing for days. Could you go? Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> the easiest part of the whole thing. That is awesome. And Emily, you asked me a really good question. You said, how long did it take me to sew my locks together yeah. and really to find the fabric to lay it out because you know I did scraps sure. and sew the whole thing together took me I did six of them like an hour and a half wow yeah That's so easy so easy yeah perfect for for you know prepping for Valentine's Day it's like right I'll do it now when you you know one more right. there's a little bit of downtime and everybody's kind of oh yeah getting out of the, you know, out of the holiday <laughs> funk. I, I was actually, you know, done with Christmas early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, on Friday, because I took Friday off, um, I sewed the whole, a whole penguin quilt for um, Aries. I did the one with the penguins and the snowflakes. Oh, the yes. The go playful penguins while hanging or whatever it is. That is such a cute one. Yeah, it was super cute. All oh, those little penguins. Yeah, they're really fun. <laughs> they're really fun. So, you know, just, we always, I think quilters have to have something on their design wall. Totally. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna cut these apart. I'm gonna lay them back out. And it doesn't really matter if they go back into the same order because as long as they're not the same fabrics next to each other, we're good. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm just gonna lay these out. And don't forget, if you have questions, um, the amazing Emily, can we can ask questions yes. too. Yes. Gail's actually wondering um, how to tell when your cutting mat is worn out. Oh, Emily, do you know? Yeah, when honestly, it, it you can kind of tell when 
if the dye isn't cutting cleanly, really. Right. Um, you know, if they're if you are kind of getting a lot of those little threads, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you, and you can also kind of see it visually on the right. cutting mat. I mean, once you have, you know, all of those cuts built up and those blades have, you know, cut through it so many, do you know, hundreds of times or what have oh, you. Thousands of times on so, some of them. So, so many times. Um, you know, you can just, that's, that's when you kind of go, all right, time to replace it. And yeah. I've heard of folks using their old cutting mats to like, Ba you know, put a hard base in the bottom of their purses, like you right. can, I think or shopping were, bags. Ex yeah, they're shopping six bags. By Twelve cutting mats. Exactly, they fit yeah. great. They so. fit right there and hold your bottoms of your grocery bags. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue to sew these and look how fast. This is like the pro tip, right? I mean, we're going to talk about the other pro tip, but just chain piece. I mean, really. That's and so do easy. them all. Do all eight of them first, <laughs> because then you're going to be able to add that shape A and then those arches and it's going to work together perfectly. Exactly. All right, Emily, are people telling us what their favorite chocolate is? Oh my gosh, they so are. We've got, oh, Kathleen <gasps> says peanut butter fudge. Oh my gosh, that oh. sounds delicious. <laughs> yum, yum. And then somebody, who, who was it? Yes, Yvette says pistachio baklava is her favorite. Pistachio what? Baklava. Oh my goodness, people eat foods that I've never had. Oh my goodness. Pistachio baklava, have you ever had that? It is unreal. It's like the most, it's like flaky pastry and then there's a layer of pistachio. It's like a, it's like a sweet so pistachio. So instead of walnuts, which are typical in baklava, you use pistachio. That's right. Wow. Oh, so, so, so good. It's like, it's like a dream and a bite. <laughs> Last week we were talking about Chinese food. That's right. <laughs> I had Chinese food for lunch that day, just in case anybody wondered. <laughs> I stopped at Hy-Vee and got some Chinese. It was That's great. So funny. Okay, here we go. So look at how fast these uh, fans are coming together. Look at that. You could totally make this project in an afternoon. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I think the fact that it has the grandmother's fan blocks in it and then just squares. Yeah. I mean, goodness sakes. No, really. It doesn't get much easier than that. Exactly. All right. So now. I think we have some more fun. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So I'm going to put my die away and we're going to talk about pressing. Okay. Yes. You want to press your blocks just in one direction, okay? okay? And I think it's, I think it's really, you don't have to press them open, you can just press them in one direction. And the, really, they're gonna just lay there mm -hmm. and go with the flow, okay? All right, so here, we need to make sure that our arches are different here. And I like that you're that you know you waited to sew all of them to to press. Oh my yes, too. yeah. I'm, don't just make one block. Yeah, one full block. Sew all your pieces together. Okay. Perfect. Oh, that was from something I cut last week. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Surprise. Okay. All right. So oh. two four six two four six. Okay. They didn't look like they were the same, but they are. So all right. Yes. So now I have my little iron. Thanks, Brock, for turning on my iron for me. And I am gonna press these just one direction. Hey, if you um, didn't get all the things you needed from for the holidays, um, check out our website. We have some great deals. And this is a great little iron. I don't know if you, anybody needs an iron and a pressing mat for the new year, but they're on the website. They're great. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be in, because I have the little shovel iron and I love oh, it, yes. but I think I, that little steam fast one, I'm just, every time I see you use it, I'm like, I get, I, I yeah, I'm like, I think that needs to come home with me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did actually for the holidays get um, a, an actual like new ironing board cover. Oh, really? Well, okay, I'm pretty sure the one I've had has been there for like 15 years. It was terrible <laughs> shape. The lovely Erica got a big ironing board um, to go over her ironing, one of those big ones that you can, you know, oh. press out quilts and stuff on. Yeah. All right. So now that we have um, pressed our seams, okay, now we're going to add that shape A, which is here. And I am going to use some pins. 
because look at how cool this is. Oh, here, hold on. It's got to just lay it just flat enough so you can get all those pins in there. Right. Okay, and you want a pin, okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, who don't usually pin, I pin, okay? All right, so, but look, here the notches are going to line up. So as you pin it, then it's going to be able to add that shape A. So that's my pro tip, is that you want to use your pins to keep um, your shape A in place. Yeah, I think, I think when I sewed a curve for the first time, I remember, and you kind of pin like right on the notch too, yes. right? Because that's right. that ensures that you're going to line yeah, that up. Yeah, you just, just line them up perfectly. Yeah, I, love I agree. Um, oh, Madeline has a great question about bowl cozies. Okay, Madeline, ask. She is wanting to applique a flower on it using heat and bond. Okay. But is wondering if that could go back in the microwave. If Not the that. minute you put heat and bond on it, you can't. Mm -hmm. um, how come? Do you know, Emily? Because um, it'll it'll like melt and yeah, it'll not, melt. Not be okay in the microwave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you could totally like stitch it on, right? You totally could. Yeah. Absolutely. You could just stitch it on and then Here. it would be um, just right there. And you could totally do penguins or gnomes or whatever you were going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't use the heat and bond. Just cotton thread, right? Because that's cotton microwave. Cotton thread so. and use our wrap and zap. Good old wrap and zap. Or no. Or, right? um, no. The... Maybe that is right. Hold on, I'm all, I'll hold, hold please. Wrap and I'll zap check. for the bowl cozies <laughs> and yes. Insel Bright for the oven mitts. Ins Insel Bright, that's the one I was thinking of. Had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> so look at all of my pins. They're not, the notches are lining up beautifully here. Okay, all right. Now, the lovely Erica, she sews from the other side I find it easier for me to keep my pieces straight mm -hmm. if I sew from the, the top side. Okay. So, um, you know, you have the smiley face and the frowny face. Um, but this is how I like to sew it because then as I sew, I can make sure that the bottom mm -hmm. is lining up. Okay? Oh, yeah, that makes great sense. Those seams. All right? It is and everybody's going to ask the answer is yes. I do a back stitch. <laughs> and you were right. It is the it's the wrap and zap. <laughs> oh, good. You we're totally on. Well, listen. Point. The chances of me being wrong today were pretty good as well. So, all right. So I'm going to come right here. Don't forget to tell us what's your favorite Valentine candy. Yes. Let's see here. Ooh, Wanda says she makes her own chocolate covered cherries. Oh, Wanda. Wanda. That's awesome. Hey, I, I want to come to your house for Valentine's Day. Right. Will you be my Valentine Wanda? Yeah. <laughs> right? Wow. Oh. That's a treat. That's kind of a funny. Um, so my dad is watching today. Hey, Papa. Um, my son, Taylor, and my dad, for years and years and years on, at Christmas time, we send Papa chocolate-covered cherries from Godiva. Ooh, yum. That's kind of our Christmas. Well, not ours, just Taylor and Papa's Christmas tradition. And notice, quilters, I am going nice and slow. This is not the Indy 500 here. <laughs> just want to take it nice and easy. And if you get to a point and you think, wait, 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 I need to make sure everything's tucked underneath there, just make sure your needle's down, mm -hmm. and then it will work. Genius. I know. I just... I am really careful because the notches are so helpful. They really are. Yeah. That it just gets everything together. Okay. Yeah, they are fantastic. So I was at, um, years ago, I was at a quilt shop and there was a woman who made her own chocolate covered cherries. And it's kind of a cool trick because, hold please while I backstitch. Um, <laughs> Because what happens is you actually take the cherries and you wrap them and they're kind of in um, like a thick paste. Ooh. And then you dip them in the chocolate and the chemical reaction then makes the centers liquid. What? There's science involved in making chocolate covered cherries. Wow. Okay, so now look. I'm gonna press and they're gonna kind of have a natural flow of which way they wanna go, these seams. Okay, but oh, look at how cool that turned out. Gorgeous. Okay, and we're gonna do one more, and then I'm gonna show you how to add the arches, okay? okay. 
So look at how easy that was. The trick quilters is just making sure you take your time and you pin, okay? All right, and then we're gonna, then we're gonna lay out our heart because it's so easy, so easy. All right, what else are people eating on Valentine's Day? Yes. Um, Valentine's Day is on a Tuesday this year. Is um, it? We have a show. We, all the, all, can I say, Brock? Is it up? Okay, never mind. <laughs> but it's coming up. <laughs> no, wait, I just said uh, that we have a Tuesday show on Valentine's Day. I didn't say what we're going to talk about. I know. Oh, it'll be Brock is fun. the keeper of all of our events, so I have to be real careful there. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm pinning right to those notches together. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's going to get really tight in here, but it's okay because then it's going to lay out perfectly. Exactly. All right, Emily, do we have questions or? We sure do. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Carol's following up about, you know, we were talking about the dye, or excuse me, the, the cutting mats. Um, yes. She's wondering about using unworn pieces of cutting mats and like cutting very, to cut very small mat, like basically like sub cutting your cutting mat. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to tell you that's probably not the best idea. One, it's going to be really hard to cut that cutting mat. Yeah. And I would hate for you to cut your hand or something as you were trying to sub cut them. And then the edges are going to be really, really jagged. Yeah. So go to the website, get you some mats. Yeah. And you could even, I mean, you can always do like a six by six on a six by 12 if you're only cutting certain shapes right. or, you know, that kind of thing. So yep. yeah, that it's similar concept, just, you know, maybe a six by six instead of cutting them down. Yeah. Um, no, we get that question a lot. So look, see, my notches are all lined up. I'm going to start at the corner and then I'm going to backstitch um, so that my pieces stay together. Okay. okay. See, and we and Joyce was wondering, well, this maybe after you're done sewing to, to look at the die, she's wondering how we would lay lay out um, or lay out the fabric to cut the outer piece C in all one color. Oh, okay, I'm gonna show you. Well, I can show you. Just give me a minute. Yeah. We'll we'll get there. We'll talk about it in a sec. But in the meantime, let's talk about candy. Let's talk about Valentine candy. <laughs> Ooh, Nancy says red hot hearts. Oh, I do love good red heart, red hots. They're great. Yeah, they really are. Um, what are the other ones? The, not red hats. What are they guys? I don't know. I don't know. They're cinnamon like big... candies. Hot tamales, oh, Joe knows. Yes. I do love a good hot tamale. I'm more of a sour patch kind of girl. Oh, know? I am not a sour fan. No. <laughs> mm. I don't mind the cinnamon and the spicy, but I'm not a sour. Yeah. Morgan said she loves fun dip, which is also nice and, you know, tart. And it's got the tart and the sweet and all the sweet things. and sweet tarts. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's ground up for you <laughs> yeah. in a powder form. There you go. All Very right. Nice. So look, notice how I'm going really slow. I'm lifting up that needle to make sure all of my... Um, seams are getting pressed or getting sewn the right way. Yeah. Okay. And this just, you know what, quilters, if you're not used to sewing curves, just, just practice, you yeah. know, just take some, you know, uh, fabric and just practice sewing some curves here. Yeah. It's, it's not hard at all. It just takes a minute. Yeah. It's okay. like nothing to it, but to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Fun dip, I love that. I know, right? Okay. It's classic. It's hard to right. find though. So, well, I feel like you can find it at Valentine's Day and Halloween. That's true. Right? That's true. Yeah. Okay. There was already Valentine candy up at the store. Oh, like wow. Like the day after Christmas or two days after Christmas, there was already. Well, I'll never forget being at the grocery store on Halloween night, and they had all of their Christmas stuff just like in a big pile laid out ready to go. I'm amazed. Go. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to add my border. So, so let's answer the question of how you're going to cut your border. Yes. So if you were doing... Um, the same centers and the same border, the arch. Yeah. 
is the same colors. Um, you would just measure from here to here, I think it's 10 inches. Yeah. At a quarter of an inch, not either side. Just rough cut and go fan fold back and forth. Oh, there you go. Right? And then it's gonna cut them. Nice and easy. Okay. And for my, my um, light caramel colored ones, mm -hmm. um, I just needed these. So I just cut a square, folded it over. Oh, right. so it's kind of like a triangle and then yeah. it, okay, that, that's perfect, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice, and then there's not that a lick of fabric sense. wasted. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. We want it to make sense. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing with this outer arch. Okay, we're gonna start here in the corner and we are gonna pin and you wanna make sure that they're all lined up and that you pin them straight so that um, your block just comes together perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then it finishes to nine inches, which is magnificent. Okay. No, it's so cool. Let's see. Oh, so Carol says that she sewed some of her two inch strips together before cutting the fan and made it scrappy. So it's a great way to lose oh, these leftover Carol, strips. Carol. Right? That's brilliant. It's like stripes on stripes on stripes. Yeah. That'd be so cute. <gasps> That would be really cute. Ooh, gonna have to try that. I know, I do love a good scrappy quilt. This is one of the things, okay, I have to say, Amanda, I'm a big fangirl of Amanda. She does amazing, amazing things. Uh, but when we launched the Grandmother's Fan and I saw this, I thought, man, we are gonna make this on a Wednesday. Oh yeah. Because it's just so cute. And I thought it was so clever you know, to just use some of the fans to make the heart. Absolutely. Okay, so I've pinned one. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, so um, Emily's gonna answer the question, how does AccuQuilt help improve my quilting? Oh man, it how, it, it just, it, well, you're gonna cut your fabric 90% faster, first of all. Right. So it's gonna save you so much time. You're gonna have 100% accurate cuts, which when you're sewing a straight line, you're gonna to wanna to make, I mean, could you imagine how wonky your quilt would be if you didn't have perfectly straight edges? Oh, right, right? or try to cut out these pieces without a die. I mean, seriously, yeah, without with those beautiful notches that just make it so easy, the quarter inch seam allowance, which is built in, it's like, how does it not help you improve your quilting? You know yeah. what I mean? Just amazing. Yeah. Well, and I have to tell you, um, over the holidays, um, I made a quilt for my son Taylor, mm -hmm. and um, it was a great Elizabeth Hartman pattern, and um, I could use my strip dies to make some of it. Sure. But I'm gonna tell you, the rest of the pieces, you know, I was cutting, you know, tiny little rectangles and squares and stuff. I, I really forgot what it was like to cut with a rotary cutter and a ruler. Mm -hmm. You know, just that accuracy, I think, is one of the things. It almost, yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm in, like, the Wild West of cutting when I'm doing, like, <laughs> That's even a just great, <laughs> That is a great <laughs> comment, <laughs> Wild West. It is, it's just like you're, you're you know, you got blades flying everywhere, and you got, you got fabric going all, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm notorious for not being able to cut a straight line, so. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Oh Gosh, I love this die. And I have to tell you, I've had a lot of practice because for Katie's quilt, I made, I don't know, dozens of these blocks. Yeah, that was The so same cool. way. Took my time, made all the shape Bs, sewed them together, added that shape A, and then added the shape C. Oh my gosh. Okay. I want to get my hands on a Pam quilt. Yes. <laughs> asked me that the other day I posted um you can always follow me on AccuQuilt educator Pam Heller mm -hmm. and somebody asked me that the other day they're like how can I be on your Christmas list yeah. <laughs> exactly. I don't know I don't know um, all the kids in my family um, Mason and his girlfriend Emily mm -hmm. Mason's Emily is how I refer to her yeah um and Taylor and Katie and um Sweet Aries all got Christmas quilts this year gosh, how fun. Yeah, it was fun. And they were all different. I used different bob dies for all of them. That's amazing. So it was fun. All right, so now I'm gonna do this last one and then we're gonna lay out our heart. And then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to cut the squares and the setting um, triangles that you're gonna need to finish this quilt. Mm -hmm. So think about if you have the nine inch setting triangles, that's what you wanna use oh, yeah. because the little um, squares are turned on point. Okay. All right. I love this. Pat says, when I pull out the ruler and cutting mat, I feel like I'm in a time warp. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right? Amen to that, Pat. Right? <laughs> I w when I was doing some cutting over the holidays, um, I had to do some sub cutting and I nicked myself with a rotary cutter and I was like, dang, now I remember why I use go dies. Exactly. Okay, so I did the same thing. Look, I've come right here, I've pinned all the way and now it's gonna lay together beautifully as I stitch. All right, Emily, while I'm stitching this last one, tell us what people are, candies they're loving for Valentine's. All of the candies. Um, Linda says dark chocolate with almonds or cashews, turtles, and more. Oh, look at this. And then Cassie. Because it's live TV, we, I have to uh -oh. rewind my thing here. You're fine. Keep going. <laughs> I can, I can multitask. Oh, perfect. Here. And then let's see, Miss Kathy says, I, oh my gosh, she makes apple peanut fudge. Apple peanut fudge, I've never heard of. I know, right? It almost like, it, but I bet you it has like the peanut butter and jelly kind of vibes. You know what I mean? Like the peanuts and oh, the apples, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the fruit and I the nuts. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It sounds delicious. Yeah. What an interesting combination too. Um, my husband loves like jalapeno jelly. Ooh, yum. You know, apple and jalapenos. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm not a hot spicy food fan, mm. but he loves that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Let's see. Oh, I've never, I've never heard of these. Judy says Betty Jane dark chocolate gremlins. Okay, gremlins. <laughs> okay, first eat. of all, I've never heard of that. And now I really want some. No, because I've never heard of chocolate gremlins. Me neither. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna be looking for that now this afternoon. Like, where do I find some gremlins? The internet. Of the internet will get you gremlins. Exactly. Oh, Elizabeth Classic loves reading the conversation hearts. Oh, those are super fun. Absolutely classic. Super fun. Let me check too and see if we have any more questions. Because yes, I know we're starting to. Your questions. This is just coming I had together, to rethread so. my needle because I don't know. Life oh, happens. Love this question. Okay, Cindy is wondering. Keep talking. Uh, Cindy asks, is there a difference between fan folding and just putting cut fabric right side up and down? What do you think, Emily? Well, not because it's it, it's going to be when you're fan folding, it's obviously, you know, you're going to be using like a long, longer piece of fabric as opposed to maybe, you know, individual scraps that you might lay like right side up and down. But fan folding is going to give you both sides. So you want to be sure if they are directional shapes that you're laying out that fabric correctly. Correct. Um, Cause if it's, you know, if it is right one, one side up and one side down and it's a directional, then you're going to be a little cranky. Yeah. So. No, that's a great question. And I have a tendency to fan fold, like Emily said, if I have long, big pieces of fabric. Mm -hmm. um, if I have scraps that I'm using, I, sometimes they just place one up and one down because I don't have enough mm -hmm. to go back and forth. Sure. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great thing. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm loving everything about this. Right? Ooh, I love this question. What cube would you use with the snowball bob die? Oh, okay. Let's Do you know how big it finishes to? I am six inch. Oh, so you'd use the six inch or the 12 inch cube. Look at Emily knowing some stuff <laughs> on a Wednesday. We'll get, we'll get there. You know, one yeah, of these. No, that's ex <laughs> that is exactly the right answer. Now we, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago on a show, mm -hmm. We talked about how you could add borders to blocks. Yes. So like if it finishes to six inches and you have the nine inch cube, you know, you could add some strips and some borders to it so that that snowball would finish to a nine inch. Oh, totally. Right? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, and I think that that is something that we often um, don't think about or talk about enough with our cubes is that, yeah, it makes a six inch block, but we have 18 sizes of strip dies that will allow you to make that block bigger. Yeah. Right? Oh, it's perfect. Okay. Look at this. I love it when I get to rethread a needle. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna press away on my little arch here. Okay. And look how easy and fast it was to make these blocks. I, I just, that's the thing to me is that you could truly make this project in an afternoon. Yeah. I mean, what are you guys doing today? Find your pink and red scraps. Amanda used red scraps. I have way more pink scraps 
because Oakley, uh, my granddaughter Oakley, is in our life. <laughs> What is Oakley? I bet she is just a ham at the fabric store. Could you do you take her with you ever? Um, no, <laughs> never ever do I take her to a fabric store. And here's why: because she is very opinionated. I know you find that hard to believe. Um, she's very opinionated about the kind of fabric she likes. Oh, okay. And so I just let her kind of shop in my stash. Perfect. And say, here you go. Okay. So let's lay out her heart. The first thing I did was I downloaded the pattern. It's a free pattern at AccuQuilt.com. Okay, so now I know, for example, and I have some of my um, borders already sewn. So this right here is this corner, and here's the dark chocolate corner. Okay, and there's a white one here. Put that here. Now, didn't you say that you did Kona solids for the gingham? Because Pat is wondering what. I did use Kona solids for the gingham. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I am a big Kona solid fan. Um, and the reason is Kona solids has a tendency to be really good fabric. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I'm laying about here. Oh, look at this. Okay, hold on. Uh, we got to turn them on point. This is the problem here. I was like, why is this not working? <laughs> it's because we need to turn them on point. Okay, there we go. There oh, we go. Let's go. Right. I just think this is so great. So this would have a white arch. Okay, now here's where it's super cool because now we're gonna turn the blocks this direction. Mm -hmm. Right? And then this direction. This way, have a, there we go. I know, it's like it's so, yeah. It's nice to have the pattern right there, too. Right, well, uh, that's the reason it's here, so that I do this, <laughs> right? Okay, so, yep, so we would have the little um, arch on this one. But look at how cool this is. It's starting to make the pattern. And then this one is here. Okay, it's gonna come right here. Okay, and then I have one more somewhere that goes here, okay? So look at how it's starting to make that heart. Yeah. Okay? So pretty. Really so, so pretty. Okay? And again, total scrappiness. You could totally make it all pinks and reds if you wanted to. Um, this would be a great quilt for Go Quilt. Okay? Yes. And then I'm gonna show you just how fast it is to cut nine and a half inch squares because their quilters is a dive for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna move this here. All right. It'd be fun to do it in like a in like a black and gray scale too. See, Emily's See, already really thinking. Cool. And you know, hearts aren't just for Valentine's Day. Exactly. Okay. So this is our nine and a half inch square. It fits in our go big fabric cutter. Okay. It won't fit in our go. So if you have a cutter with a handle on it, this will not fit there. Okay. And we can always cut up to six layers of fabric. Um, I am going to just do three of this and then three of the other. And I've just subcut my fabric, okay? Just measured side to side, added a quarter of an inch, just cut with the fabric strips, okay? And now I can use my Go Big mat. Yep, that 14. We don't plus. often use Go Big mats. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, those big old 14 by 16s. I know, they're I'm great. Around. I'm gonna move this. <laughs> I know, they're just huge. huge. Oh, Jenny's wondering if we've done a video on the apple core die. Oops. Um, gosh. I believe, I believe I, we have. I, I have. I think I've done a little video on how to put it together. Apple core, you gotta think, um, you think they all go one direction, but they go up and then vertical and horizontal, vertical and horizontal. Okay. 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 Now, already, look. Whoa. Look how fast I cut those nine and a half inch squares, okay? And they're gonna just be absolutely perfect, okay? So I'm gonna do the same with my lighter brown. I thought this looked like chocolate, didn't you think? It really like does. chocolate and maybe caramel, it's <laughs> so we're talking about things. Seriously. Okay. Then the last thing I wanna show you are how to cut the setting triangles and the corner triangles, um, because let me show you on the quilt here. 
All right, so here they are. Amanda did these beautiful things. They're turn on point. Right. So these right here are setting triangles, okay? And then this down here are the corner triangles, okay? So what you need is, do you want me to go up, Justin, or are you good? Okay, so here's the corner triangles and the setting triangles. Look at the fabric. Oh, the back. pretty. Okay? So what I've done is kind of a cool little trick. Um, I cut my strip and then I actually cut off the edge oh. so that it didn't hang over here and cut part of that setting triangle. Because yeah. you just need brown setting triangles. You don't need brown corner triangles. Right. Okay. And then I did that trick where I just cut a square. I need four of them. And now I can just take and go like this. Right? Look at that. Right. Then I'm not wasting any fabric. It's like fabric Tetris. It is like fabric <laughs> Tetris. Let's make some. Let's make some good fabric choices yes. here. So quilters, these are just some tips. When we um, launch the die, we um, show you how to make the blocks, which I think is really important. And always make a test block. Okay? All right. So you would use the squares to make the rows for the heart. And then we're going to show you how to cut those setting triangles. Awesome. And this fast. Setting triangles require math. And back in the day before we had setting triangle dies, I would just cut a big square and I'd sew the edges to the edge of the quilt. And then literally I would just take my rotary cutter and ruler and cut off the edge because I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't just know how to do it. it. <laughs> didn't know how to do that math. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. Speaking of rotary cutter, Marilyn says, I started quilting before the rotary cutter was invented, 1979. I have to say AccuQuilt beats scissors and a rotary cutter. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on here. I have one string. Wow. Like, could you imagine? No. Oh, 1979 is when the rotary cutter, we should have had that as a trivia question. We should. That's, I love that. Right. Oh, Naomi, she's so sweet. She says, Pam, I'm getting a kick out of watching today's show. She made her first grandmother's fan while she was stationed at uh, SAC off at Air Force Base in 1990. And it's in her Omaha, favorite. Nebraska. In Omaha, Nebraska. So cool. We miss you. We miss says, you from here. I know. She says, thanks for the memories. That's so sweet. Thanks, Naomi, right. for sharing. That is so fun. All right. So here's my corners and here's my um, sides. So let me show you where they go. So here's those corner triangles. We've cut off the dog ears, so they're going to come together perfectly. Oh, I love it oh, when it fabric sticks. sticks. Yes. <laughs> love it. We can just okay, see and then here are those setting triangles. And look at how perfect they are. So fun. I know. So quilters, so fast, so easy. You can make it in the afternoon. Okay? Today, you should all make one. All right, you would continue to follow the pattern to create rows of squares. Then you're going to layer batting between the quilt top and the batting, pin or baste. Quilt is desired. Use your favorite binding method to finish your quilt. And be sure and share your finished projects with us on social media. So I am nearly done with this because I have all of my blocks sewn now. Yeah. Thanks to today's show. <laughs> um, so if you follow me on AccuQuilt Educator Pam Heller on Facebook, um, you can see my finished project. All right, so Emily's going to announce the winner of our die today. Oh boy, love it. Okay, a favorite thing to do. <laughs> it is, it's my favorite thing of the whole show. If I could have a drum roll, please. Our winner today is Harriet W. of Plano, Texas. Congratulations. Excellent. Excellent. All right, quilters, this month's die to try is the Go Priscilla Stripe die. So this is that super cute block that it makes. Love you can it. either make it in a light background or a dark background. Really fast, easy so. six inch blocks that you could put together. Um, they're only available to the end of the month, which is Friday. Friday. Get yours today. Whoa. <laughs> On behalf of everyone here in the Dream Studio, we have Justin and Joe and Brock. And offsite, we have Lauren and Katie. Oregon and Katie yep. and of course the amazing Emily is here with me 
And I am Pam Heller. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join me and Erica on Tuesday, January 3rd at 12 noon Central Time as we kick off the new year with a new die to try. And be sure to join us next week for AccuQuilt Live as we cut and sew a block from that new die to try. Be sure and register on the events page for the chance to win prizes. On behalf of our entire team, we wish you a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year.